Good evening, everyone. This is our this dialogue. I'm Sintayo Tamrat with this edition. And Ethiopia is set to start water filling its uh, mega hydropower dam as rainy season has come. And Egypt and Sudan have shown concerns of dam uh, safety. However, Ethiopia says uh, its uh, mega dam is by far the safest dam as compared to the dams downstream countries because it is being constructed with the state of art uh, technology in uh, dam construction. So uh, this edition of Addis Dialogue will bring you expertise insights into this matter. And, and we will also try to bring you the advantages or any harm the Ethiopian dam will bring uh, to the downstream dams. So my guests today are uh, Dr. Haptamu Itafa and Dr. Fesa Bahulu, who are both hydraulic uh, engineers. Welcome to Addis Dialogue, Dr. Haptamu and Dr. Fesa. Well, so uh, my first question will go to Dr. Fesa. Uh, what issues does dam safety entail? Uh, and uh, to what extent does the safety or quality of uh, hydro dams like the GERD will matter to uh, downstream as well as upstream countries? With regard to this uh, dam safety, the key elements we need to consider are the structural stability, and also the flood issues and other uh, issues associated with the appurtenant structures. So when we come to the structural stability, there are key components that we need to consider. Uh, the first thing is the, the weight of the dam itself. And that weight should not be uh, affected by the sliding and also the overturning component. And those forces are quite safe in the case of GERD. The other thing is the safety associated with the seismic hazard. In the case of GERD, luckily, the seismic issue is almost in the zero region. So there is no, if, you, if we look at the uh, seismic hazard map, it's out of the rift system. And there is no serious issue associated with that seismic hazard. And the other thing is the flood issue. Whenever there is high flood coming into the system, uh, the dam should safely discharge those uh, floods coming due to the excess flow from the upstream part. So in our case, it has been tested both for the flood which is passing through the, the uh, river system as well as for the flood which will be resulted due to high rainfall in the upstream. We call that in hydrologic term as a probable maximum flood. In both cases, those things are quite evaluated and even that is justified by the international panel of experts who are assigned to evaluate those issues. So in one way or another, the issue of dam safety in the case of GERD is not as such a serious issue uh, for, for the future development in, in that system. Well, uh, Dr. Abtamu, uh, here dams in Egypt and Sudan were constructed decades back and they might have not seen uh, the advances in construction engineering. If so, would you tell us uh, the safety or quality status of uh, the dams downstream uh, as compared to Ethiopian dam? Actually, even we cannot really compare with the, those time technology and the type of dams they have. One of the dams is the Aswan Dam, what they have in, in, in Egypt, and the other one is in Sudan. These are the big, big dams that are uh, creating big impoundment. So, so far, they have been uh, operational. What they had there is a problem with the evaporation because they are constructed on a flat plain and we have a lot of loss on Nile River in Egypt, the same in Sudan. When we come to the Ethiopian dam, the Yaridi, it is in the constricted section of the valley that it will be occupying a small place on a stronger foundation and the amount of evaporation, the amount of loss, the way the impoundment is created is far better than what is harder. That is one point. The second point is even the dam type that I said. The one which we had now, the GRD is the rolled concrete dam, which is to the modern and to the best technology, and with the appropriate expertise also from international point of view, how they are constructing, how they are doing is contractors of international experience with well technical background and everything is to the standard. So even we cannot really have a basis to compare with those old days dam 
and what we are constructing. And this will make us sure and confident that the GRD is, from technology point of view, from the technical safety, far better than and much advanced than what they have on the downstream side. Yeah, just a point on that. Um, when you take the, the actually, as Dr. Atamo has mentioned uh, in, in the right way, it's uh, somehow difficult to compare the two. The reason is uh, there is an international committee on large dam. They have produced quite a lot of documents for dam safety analysis and assessment. And most of those documents were produced after the completion of the high one dam. So in our case, in the GERD case, all those documents were carefully taken into account. And the other point that I may add is on the evaporation loss. If you take the terrain of the downstream country or the Egyptian uh, dams, they are on flat terrain. And when the, the, the evaporation is more associated with the energy or the incoming energy. And when you take the incoming energy, it, when it comes to the, the shallow, shallow water body, the evaporation is very high. In our case, since it is in, a, in a, a valley and the depth of the water is very high, you will get quite a low amount of evaporation from there. And the other thing, the surface area. The highest one dam is on, uh, extended on a larger surface area, whereas in our case, uh, on a smaller surface area. That will contribute uh, high to the, the evaporation produ production from the highest one dam when, com when it is compared to the GERD. So in this regard, uh, really the comparison of the old system with the new system is somehow questionable. Well, uh, let me come to Dr. Haptam and what safety benefits or risks as well can the GERD bring to downstream dams? The advantage is more overweight. That, that would be good to, to discuss. There has been studies conducted at the very beginning, by the time the Egyptians were complaining with regard to the start of the, the dam. Different technical expertise, different consultants have tried to produce. Really, what does this GRD uh, bring? What's the advantage? Should it be done or no, from technical point of view? So we have clear parameters, clear indicators that it will benefit everybody of us. For example, if we take the, the hydrology itself, the floods they used to suffer in August without the dam, without the GRD. After our dam, they are going to be more safer against that flood. This will benefit both our Egyptians and the Sudanese brothers. It is clearly put. We have uh, a quantified number, of course, when we are talking of uh, floods, sometimes there are uh, some variability. Anyway, it is estimated to be 6,000 meter cube per second would have around that amount of magnitude of floods reached to attack the, the downstream side. Without the dam, I mean. When we are having this dam, we are going to retain this amount of flood here and release it during the dry months. Because hydropower by itself has nothing to abstract from the water. We store the water, generate the energy, after heating the turbine, it will be going downstream. That is one of the advantages for them. For example, to tell you, around the months of February and, uh, and March, the minimum flood, the minimum flow in the river, in Blue Nile, is less than 200 meters cube per second. After this dam, it will be rising to 3,600. The Sudanese, the Egyptians, they are using Blue Nile for irrigation. So they are going to have more command area. They are going to have more land to be irrigated by the expense of our dam, expense of our water <laughs> that we are going to retain. So this is a clearly advantageous for both Egyptians and the Sudanese. It is a number that we can, we can talk. Not only that, even the sediment, the, the amount of sediment in, in Blue Nile itself is around 135 million tons per year. That is what it used to uh, transport and then detain in Aswan and other dams they have. After we are going to have this GRD, the sediment yields in, in Blue Nile will be around less than 20 million tons. So the remaining we are going to harvest on our side and retain it here. So they are going to have clear water. For that case, they need to appreciate and even contribute to the dam. They say, they need to say, thank you, Ethiopia. Third point, clearly, like I raised. When we are going to have this dam, 
as of the last year, the initiative started by our peer with the Green Initiative. That is exactly mean to say the soil and the water conservation on the Philippine Highlands. When we are going to have, for example, this year's plan to, to plant around 5 billion in Ethiopia, Blue Nile is covering almost large size of the country, and this share of the 5 billion will be in Blue Nile Basin. That means the amount of water that will be produced, the spring that will be generated in our island will be increased because we have the dam to protect that sediment in our dam. We are going for the catchment treatment, for the watershed management, for the soil conservation approach. In one or the other way, this will be increasing the water availability, the water yield, the quantity of water in blue night. So that quantity of water will be actually reaching to, to the downstream. These are really a lot of points we can clearly put in number from a biological point of view. If, uh, for example, even our neighbors, not only Egypt and Sudan, by the way, really the Kenyans, our Kenyan brothers, uh, the Somalians, the Djiboutians, Eritreans, by the time Ethiopia is going to generate this big amount of power, we are going to export for them. If we see in number, the Egyptians are almost having around 100% electric coverage in, in their uh, country. If you see in East Africa, it's less than 40%, 40%, 50%, 20%, and everywhere. So the water availability, the water availability for hydropower in Boluna and in GRD will be increasing also the power supply in the region, mostly for Ethiopia. So from this point of view, this dam will be uh, really making beneficial Egyptians, Sudanese, and our neighbors of the East African country. That is uh, really what we have in number talk. If someone is uh, uh, taking genuine mind and try to see why our Egyptian brothers or Sudanese brothers are complaining against this dam, it's really not clear because we have this in number we can talk. The sediment I told you is the, around 85% of that sediment will be retained here. So they need to be happy for that. <laughs> they need to be happy for that. Use only the dam. Forget about the, the watershed. Dr. Aftamu have raised quite good points uh, that uh, GEARD can uh, benefit the downstream countries. Uh, the other thing that I may add is through this regulated flow, uh, they will have a chance to get uh, crop rotation uh, that for planting throughout the year. That is one added value. The other thing, since they get regulated flow, their dams will not be affected because if you take Egypt, uh, sorry, Sudan, which are uh, the, at the immediate downstream of uh, uh, the Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, uh, they have only nearly 10 billion cubic meters of water in four dams. But due to this addition of care, they will get more water since it is regulated flow. So through that, they can, they can enrich their navigation uh, capacity of their, their water storage in their existing systems. Uh, the other point is through this uh, development of CARED, uh, the green initiative which we are exercising now in addition to the dam uh, has also another additional value, the replenishment of groundwater system. They will get uh, as uh, ample resource as they can from, from the replenished groundwater system. So those issues are, I mean, those points are really uh, quite relevant points to be considered. But the problem is the benefits are too much told to every direction and to everybody in the, in the system. They know all the benefits. And we are a, bi a bit puzzled by the questions which are repeatedly coming from the downstream uh, countries, especially from Egyptian side. Okay. Both uh, Dr. Fisai and Haptamu uh, mentioned the benefits of Ethiopian dam to downstream uh, countries. If it is a reality, why do you think is Sudan and largely Egypt are always crying over uh, the safety of Ethiopian dam? And do you think that it is an honest concern? The straightforward response I have on this is it's, an, it's not an honest concern or it's not an honest request. The reason is, uh, they, in, in the first place, they are, they are dealing with uh, old-fashioned hegemony on the uh, river Nile. And the other thing, um, 
I'm sorry to say they have uh, all that kind of behavior and character in opposing every development in the Nile system. If we take the development of GERD from the very beginning, when, if, when we start the, the uh, initial stage of the, the, the dam, they were opposing. Then the first opposition is not to start the dam. And then it came to the other stage, whenever, when, at the moment we start building the dam, and then they, they started complaining on the hate of the dam. And then that, that uh, stage is passed. Now it comes to the, the uh, safety issue. During the safety issue, throughout the time, it's uh, well known, we have shared all the documents we have to both countries related to this design and construction of the project. And they have clearly evaluated and justified there is no problem with that. That is a document I have been mentioning about the International Panel of Experts report. And then, okay, the safety is not an issue now. And then they come to the feeling stage. So at every stage of the development of the dam, they are building their, their opposition. Then the feeling is not a, such an issue. This year, by the way, we need to focus on three points. The first one, if you look at the rainfall in the upstream part, this year is above the normal, so we don't have any problem. Second, the Victoria Lake is dramatically increasing, even above the history. The third is the highest one dam has also recorded um, the highest elevation uh, as compared to the historical water level in the system. So when we consider uh, these three uh, opportunities, filling the dam in this year is not really an issue. Now, after filling is passed, we may expect another issue will come. And we don't know what they are going to bring, but uh, building the dam, filling the dam, getting energy from the system is an equivocal in my view. That's, uh, that's the point I have with regard to this uh, issue they have. But the, 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 the Sudanese they wanted to play in between, uh, to, sorry to say that way, but they have witnessed the benefit that they get from the dam that we constructed at Takazi because they get all the, the, the benefits that we have mentioned earlier, they have already get as, as a, a sample from that project. So from this side also, the benefit is more than the one they have from the Takazi and Rozier dam. So the Egyptian request is just it's not about the technical request. It's about the hegemony, which they have already saying many times that historical right, historical right, which is not uh, applicable these days. During the, the regime when Prahal Selassie, Ethiopia, the king tried to have USCBR consultants to identify downsides in Ethiopia. Really, most of them are in Blue Nile. The downsides were identified. And when it was requested for funds, most of the Egyptians were in every uh, funding agencies. It was not successful. They really didn't want Ethiopia to develop any project on uh, Blue Nile. Coming after that, during the drug region, just 40 years back, we remember the western part of Ethiopia. It was planned to have the, the Anarpas project. It was really meant for irrigation and hydropower. That time also, they tried to create a lot of issues in this country. It was a big loss. There is a trend that they are saying there is no way we don't allow Ethiopia to use their water source, especially on, on Blue Nile. Then, by the time we started the GRD, they also started uh, the same trend, the same story, the same theory what they, they used to do in the past time. And uh, uh, it was good that it is Ethiopian people's money that the dam was started to construct. There is no way they can blackmail us in front of the donors. Name it World Bank, name it IMF, name it African Open Bank, or everywhere. So every mother in Ethiopia, every civil servant, every businessman, politicians, everybody has contributed on that dam. We try. We could really successfully start our dam and bring it to this level. So what they are doing now is, okay, the previous formulas were not working because already out of their control. They are trying to have different scenarios. 
further they say, okay, this dam should not be done because of the impact analysis. Ethiopia was open to say, okay, let, let people judge, the international community judge. That was how the first document was produced, and the different professionals try to go through and uh, convince to the, to the committee. Then later they also try to change, okay, no, this is not the parameter we are talking about. They want to see with another issue that we need to forecast, the drought in the future, what will happen, which is actually natural, which Ethiopia should not take responsibility for what will happen from nature. So every time they try to keep different formulas, try to apply different methods, different tactics to, to hinder us, not to develop the dam. But this day, I, I really want to say, from technical point of view and from every aspect, this dam cannot be reversed now. So they try. They used to Why they do, maybe a good question that you raised is, it's clear if you have power, everything will be fine for your people. Really, we are really not jealous for what they are living. I am really happy, we are happy also, as Ethiopians, because of their brothers. The Egyptian brothers, the Sudanese brothers are enjoying life on the expense of poverty in Ethiopia. Why? Because we couldn't have manufacturing industry, we couldn't have industries and every development, we couldn't use our water that is going down, eroding our land, making the land fertile, and our people are dying here. By the time we are having this dam and the power is generated, the livelihood of our poor mothers and the families will be improved. Every farmer will have access to energy. They need to think for development of their water. When we say their water is our water, the farmers, our people. So they think Ethiopia will have the power, then after having the power, they may go for irrigation, they may go for consuming the water, and so on. That is what they are afraid of. I think that will be the, 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 what they have in their mind. And, a question may come from their mind, okay, strategy may be dynamic once they change everything, okay, maybe this dam can be constructed, the Ethiopia may generate the 6,000 uh, uh, megawatt power, and then what would be the Ethiopian fate in Barokobo? Do we really keep quiet? The person how do they think? <laughs> Which actually is not in our minds, because Ethiopia is always thinking not to harm the downstream people. That is to be clear for them. Less get out of uh, the dam safety issue and let's just try to see uh, ge some general questions regarding the negotiation and Egypt's next strategy or so. So my question is goes for both of you. You will take turns. Uh, for quite some time, Egypt is concerned and opposition to the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam revolved around the construction of the dam. But of late, Egyptian politicians are picking at uh, the filling of the reservoir. So why is that becoming such a big deal? In the first place, opposing any development in the basin is the behavior of Egyptians. That's uh, something need to be underlined. The other thing, the feeling issue, they wanted to attach with some natural phenomena in the catchment. Um, as you may recall, they came with the issue of uh, droughts, drier period and prolonged drought things. And in the first place, those definitions should be really corrected because the drought should be evaluated in view of the hydrologic drought or it has to be in view of the climatic or meteorological drought or it will be in, the, in view of the, the economic drought. The drier period, the prolonged and other attachments or prefixes are just for the sake of opposing the feeling. And as I said earlier, feeling in this year, I wanted to repeat on that, has uh, come with a nice opportunity in this year because of those three things that I have uh, mentioned earlier. So the, the, the opposition is, as I said, they, that's their characteristics. And the other thing, um, when, when we, we move with this project, they may suspect there is some other development on the other two river basins, the Takaze and the Barwa Kobo. And then they wanted to build the case for those things. That is, that is my suspicion. But in any case, the Ethiopian concern uh, relies on the two basic principles uh, which are mentioned in both CFA and the 1997 uh, UN Water Convention. That is principle of 
uh, not causing significant harm, and principle of equitable water use. That's, uh, that's, uh, the, those are the basic principles the Ethiopians are following. And still, we will follow that one. In terms of care, the other issue really which is touchy in my view is, look, we are almost at a 20 kilometer distance from the border. And whenever we take care of any issues or the safety as well as any development in the upstream, it is our money which is built at the border. And there is no irrigation at the downstream, that is obvious, because we don't have land at the downstream, it's exactly close to the border. And the upstream, to irrigate at the upstream, we don't have uh, the land for that purpose. And that is obviously clear and uh, unquestionable. So there is no issue or worry from the downstream side. But as I said earlier, they wanted to build some cases which might be not clear for us today, and they may come with another issue in the, in the next few years or decades, I would say. So that is the, the, uh, the main point I, I may, I may uh, forecast from their, their concerns. Okay. Dr. Abdul, will you add here? Uh, really, yeah, it's, it's difficult to, to guess, but just something to, to judge, which, which I say it could be. Maybe two reasons. One thing, they, they for, try to see what will happen to Ethiopia after 10 years if this project is successful. So it's normal, international or globally, uh, countries or politics is always toward someone who has power, someone who has um, good faith, good opportunity. So currently when we see Egyptians are more than any East African country to be heard in front of international community uh, due to their location, due to their development, what they have from our blue line. <coughs> so, Ethiopia may reverse this issue. That is what I guess is true also. It will happen. A lot of investment will have. By the time we have this power, by the time we are successful with our dam, a lot of manufacturing industries will be draining to our country. If we see normally in any supermarket in Anadis now, just juice or any cosmetics or you name any of them, we are importing from uh, other countries, including the Egyptians themselves. So they could focus this issue. That is what I guess. The second one, maybe really I'm not sure, but it could be what I say is the internal problem to divert that issue. Try to, the politicians are trying to make people that they are fighting for them because they are fighting with Ethiopia ideally on ERD, then trying to divert some kind of attention so that people will not create any question or any kind of uprising because we could see the last 10 years that the turmoil in that country, that would be one of, uh, could be one of their, their strategy. Anyway, let's see what will be sharp and clear after we have our dam field after two months, something will come out to be clear than this one. Okay, so if Ethiopia is uh, to start filling uh, its uh, reservoir, and uh, what will be Egypt's next strategy of opposition if it, uh, this becomes successful Ethiopia and uh, I think their strategy is somehow getting um, narrow from time to time. First, they try to blackmail Ethiopia in front of the donors and international community. That fails. Uh, second, they try to make it worse and take to the UN Security Council to say that it is a threat for the world, for the globe, as if we are producing a nuclear or as if we are uh, creating some damage to to the people of the world. That also didn't work. And uh, they are now trying to make another way how to make in East Africa some kind of uh, problem, mainly in the country, creating some disability or whatever we name it. That really is somehow insignificant and nothing to break. Because uh, from the previous two experience, there has been no success from what they were doing. And when we are coming to the, to the country or to the East Africa, maybe we can have a little problem, but the Ethiopians are more united than anything when somebody is coming from uh, foreign and try to uh, attack your sovereignty. That is, they are not clear that, but they may try in that kind of option. That is one of the scenarios they could follow. The second scenario is 
now it will be realized that the dam will start to fill around that 1.9 billion that amount of water to be filled and then they keep on blackmailing in front of the international community in, in other ways actually what if the worst comes and uh, disagreement sustains among these three countries and what measures should ethiopia take now, ethiopia should continue uh, informing both the local as well as international community we are not going for any uh, harm that can happen to the downstream countries so that is a, the, that should be the ethiopian strategy and um, i don't know why i'm not expecting any worst uh, outcome from this negotiation or uh, uh, which is the agreement or discussion which is going on um, if that happens well uh, we, we we don't want to go to any sort of uh, uh, war as may be suspected or any other uh, harms that can cause both at, uh, for the national community as well as international societies because uh, it's becoming uh, the new hydrologic event in the system and obviously that uh, any project will not come without any uh, reasonable harm. Uh, if you take the, 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 their dam, it, uh, during their, the, the construction of their dam, they, they have displaced many Nubian societies from the upstream of the Aswan Dam. But still the dam is existing, the society is also there. So the same is true with us, and uh, that, that's not a problem in my view. Thank you so much, Dr. Haftamu Ittafa and Dr. Fessaha Bahullu for coming and just sharing your... Uh uh, experience as well as insights into the dam safety matters, as well as the negotiation uh, on the GERD uh, among the three countries. Thank you so much. Thank you also. Dear viewers, this has been Addis Dialogue of this edition, and my guests today have been Dr. Fesaha Bahulu and Dr. Haptamu Itafa, who are both hydraulic engineers. Uh, we talked about uh, the safety of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam as well as uh, those downstream countries. Thank you for watching us.